Hey, what's up everybody, it's Palumbo here. I uh, wanted to make a very quick video introducing you to uh, SSH key files. Um, it's a very cool, um, quick, convenient way to add an extra layer of security to your server. Um, and it's very convenient because a lot of times you can go ahead and log into your server without even using a password. Uh, so let's first of all take a kind of a high level view of uh, what key files are. And I made a pretty basic diagram here of uh, how key files work. So first thing you would do is uh, you would run this command. Um, obviously this is a Linux command. You would run it on your local machine. So not, not on the server. Um, so on your laptop, uh, you would run SSH keygen space dash T RSA. And uh, of course I would recommend uh, using the, the man file so you can man SSH dash keygen, learn a little bit more about it, learn everything about it really. But in short, SSH keygen, basically, you're just telling Linux, um, hey, go ahead and make me some key files. Uh, the dash T argument is being passed to it in this case because we want a specific type of key file, and that's RSA. RSA stands for really secure authentication. No, I'm just kidding, it doesn't actually. Uh, RSA really stands for, it's an acronym for the, the last names of the dudes that invented the RSA um, file type. Uh, I don't know what they are, but the way I always uh, know what to type is just thinking of really secure authentication. Uh, so when you type this file, or rather when you type this command, it's going to create two files for you. And because the two files are created from the same command, they're going to be linked. They're going to be almost like brothers. Um, so they're going to share some of that same DNA. They're going to know each other very, very well. Um, it's going to create a public key. It's going to create a, a, a private key. Um, and you can almost think that public key is a public key hole. Um, so essentially you have a key and then you have where that key fits in and you can turn it to unlock something. So that command is going to create two files and those two files are going to live in two different places. The public key is going to live on your server and you can actually put this on any server that you want to gain access to. You can create these key files once, pretty much use them um, uh, on several different servers uh, over the span of, of years if you wanted to. Um, they, they, they never expire. Um, so that public key is going to live on the server, the private key is going to stay on your laptop and what happens is when you authenticate um, onto the server, if you have these matching key files, uh, one on the server, one on your laptop, it will they'll see each other, they'll recognize each other, and they will allow authentication onto that machine. So on a high level overview, that is what SSH keygen files uh, are. Um, and let's actually see how we're gonna do it now. Because it's very quick, it's very simple, it adds a very convenient layer of security and uh, this is something that I think is actually pretty useful. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to log onto the server, and we're going to log onto the server kind of the old-fashioned way. So SSH is the root user at this IP. Yep. And it's going to say, by the way, the uh, the authenticity of host this IP cannot be established. RSA key fingerprint is da 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 da. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? And I type yes. And uh, that's going to come into play here in just a little bit, and I'll show you what that is. It's going to ask me for the password, so I'm going to use the system-generated password. Drop that into my terminal, and great, we have access now. Um, no problem, we can start working on the server, but there is a better way, and we're actually going to go ahead and set that up now. So I'm going to switch to my second tab, which is a terminal into my local machine. And I'm going to go ahead and run that command, um, ssh uh, keygen dash t rsa. Before I do that, though, I want to talk a little bit about where these files are going to live because um, for the sake of convenience and the sake of uniformity, they really should kind of live in, in sort of the same place on your local machine and on your server. And, they, and that the, where they should live is your home directory for your user. Every user in the world of Unix and Linux has a home directory. On Linux, typically it's going to be slash home slash user. Uh, for um, Unix, or in this case OS X, it's a little different. Um, it's going to be slash users slash username, so in this case, Palumbo. So we want to make sure that we run this command um, within our, our home directory. And more specifically, if we use the uh, ls-a, meaning list everything, including the hidden files, we're going to see a directory here, dot ssh. Uh, we actually want to jump into that directory. And right there, there is a known host file. Um, if we cat out that known host just real quick, it has um, an RSA file already in there. Remember when our server said, hey, we're going to go ahead and put uh, put our, our uh, I think it said referred to it as a fingerprint, the RSA key fingerprint? Um, this is where it actually left it, is in this known host file. 
So just to kind of show you exactly where that comes into play. Um, so we're right now we're in our home directory uh, slash dot SSH. And here's kind of a cool little trick when it comes to your home directory. Remember when we did the WordPress install, uh, I said how uh, within uh, Linux and Unix, um, there are some shortcuts to get to certain directories. For example, uh, dot was your current directory. Uh, dot dot was the directory uh, one up. Um, in the world of Unix and Linux, tilde is the shortcut for your home directory. Tilde is the character, it's the squiggly line that lives right above the tab key on the left side of your keyboard, uh, just to the left of the number one key. Um, the tilde is the shortcut for your, your home directory. So let's say, for example, if I go into var log, so now I'm in var log. If I want to jump back to my home directory, I can use the shortcut cd to tilde. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm back at users Palumbo. So um, if you don't know exactly where your home directory is, you can always use the cd tilde shortcut. It'll jump you right back to your home directory. So we actually want to jump into the .ssh directory, um, and we're going to run our keygen command. So keygen, or rather, I'm sorry, ssh, keygen-trsa, and it's going to start uh, generating this, this uh, public and private key. It's going to ask us for some information, too. It's going to ask us to designate where that file is going to live. So in this case, it's saying users palumbo slash .ssh slash id underscore rsa. Um, Absolutely, that is sort of the default place, and I have no problem with that. That's where I want it to go, so I'm just going to hit enter. Um, it's going to ask if we want to protect this key file with a passphrase. So um, we could, and that would be pretty secure, but in this case, I'm looking for a little bit of convenience too. I don't want to have to enter any password, so I'm just not going to enter anything and hit enter. Uh, I'm going to do that again when it asks me to re enter that passphrase. And oh, it's giving me notification that we had success. Um, it created both my private key and my public key. Um, it gives me the directories, the uh, user slash dot SSH, and then I've got an ID underscore RSA and an ID underscore RSA dot pub. Uh, it also gives me a fingerprint and some random art image as well. We're not going to worry about that right now. So let's go ahead and clear this out. Uh, I'm still in my dot SSH directory. Let's go ahead and list all the contents of that directory right now. And yep, there we go. I've got uh, two new files. I've got an idrsa and an idrsa.pub. So the idrsa.pub, that's my public key, that's the one that's going to live on the server. And my idrsa is my private key that's going to stay on my local machine. Um, so now the question is, how do we get the public key onto the server? It's actually pretty easy. Um, I'm going to use the cat command uh, to print out my public key. So I need the contents of what's in it. And I'm just going to copy it here. I'm going to make sure I get everything here. Uh, by the way, I like the fact that it always puts the name of the machine at the end of the uh, public key, just so I know um, if I'm at my iMac or my laptop or if I'm on my, my Linux computer, um, I know which key file is, is associated with, with what computer. So I'm going to copy this key file that I just created, this public key. Uh, I'm going to go to my server, and I want to make sure I'm in my home directory. So I'm going to do cd tilde. Um, I'm in let's see, my root directory, cool. So um, I am noticing here that I do not have a .ssh directory, which is where I want to put that, uh, that public key. Um, it's actually not a big deal. A lot of times your uh, home directory is not going to have the .ssh directory. So I'm going to go ahead and make one. And I'm going to do that using the make directory command, so mkdir .ssh. So make directory, that's my verb. My noun is to the .ssh directory. All right, cool, so we now we have that directory. Let's go ahead and jump inside of that. Nothing in there right now. So I need to go ahead and create a file where I can store these keys, or store this public key. And I'm gonna do that using the touch command. So I'm gonna touch authorized underscore keys. And if I list contents again, you'll see there's a new file in there, authorized keys. I'm going to go ahead and edit that file using the VI text editor, so VI authorized keys. And I am going to, so now I, this file is pretty much empty. I can go ahead and put whatever I want in there. Um, I already have the RSA public key in my clipboard, so I've already copied it. So in order to go into um, edit mode, um, I'm going to hit the I key, uh, or rather for insert mode. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. Uh, I'm going to close and save the, the file in VI by typing the escape button, colon, and then WQ for write quit. 
So now that it is in there, I can actually go ahead and cut out authorized keys and you'll see the content that I just pasted in there. Uh, so now I have my private key on my iMac. I have the public key on the server. So that should be pretty much everything I need to do. Let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna exit the server. So uh, I'm gonna run my SSH command again, SSH root at this IP address. And if I did it correctly, which I believe I did, I should just go ahead and get logged in automatically. So let's see what happens. And there we go. I uh, didn't have to enter a password. It recognized the private key that I have on my iMac. It matched it to the public key that I placed on the server. Now I could do this with pretty much any server um, that I log into that I want to have this kind of access. I just have to make sure that I put the uh, public key that I've created on that server. And then anytime I try to log in SSH into that server, um, if the user account that I am using to log into um, matches the user account that I'm trying to log into, uh, then Awesome, it's gonna log me in without any questions asked. So as I said, this is a very cool convenient way to get access to your server. Uh, it has a nice layer of security and not to mention a very cool layer of convenience as well. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.